right, you guys. Uh, welcome to another episode of the K&I Podcast. Uh, I'm Isaac Eubank. That's that ugly fucker, Kevin Passman, over in New Zealand. Uh, hey! <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, today, man, we wanted to touch bases with you guys. Just let you know where we came from. Because uh, when we started this podcast, or even this uh, the K&I Car Show, we were pretty much talking and entertaining our friends and family so we didn't have to tell tell them where we were from they knew and so we've grown since then and uh, we realized that there's uh, some new people out there that don't have a clue who the fuck we are there's just a couple of ugly dudes talking about you know ugly cars hey. and so uh <laughs> and so we we thought we would uh enlighten you guys let you know that um that, hey, you know, uh, this is who we are, this is where we're from, this is what we used to do, and, uh, you know, if you guys like it, you guys can jump on board and be part of the gang. So, uh, Kevin, do you want to start, or do you want me to start? How do you want to do this, bud? I can start, I can start, All right. Man. So, all righty, where are you from, good sir? Well, I am from Louisiana. I was born and raised in South Louisiana, down there with the, uh, down in the swamps, and uh, with cars and a pretty big family. And we just uh, we loved cars, and we would drag them out from barns and some out of riverbeds and everything else, and get them running, you know. And it's just been a way of life for me. Uh, I live in New Zealand now, but I, I spent 25 years in the oil field, and I uh, had enough of that and escaped to New Zealand. I've been here for about three years, but. I got into the oil field and, uh, you know, no plan, but I, let me tell you a story about how I got in. I, uh, my brother called me up and I uh, said, hey, drive me for this job interview. You know, of course he drove, he lost his driver's license, you know, drinking and driving and stuff. So it's like, all right, I'll take, I'll take a day off from Walmart. I was like 19 and he's like, uh, yeah, okay, drive me over there. So I get there and the woman doing the interview says, uh, would you like a, an application too? We're hiring lots of people and I didn't even know what the job was for, right? So I filled out the application, uh, I passed my drug test, uh, my brother failed his, and the next thing you know, I'm in the oil field, man, out in the middle of the ocean on a, on a platform. Oh, so uh, they told me, congratulations, you're a utility hand. And I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty cool, but that's basically a dishwasher and a cham chambermaid for a bunch of rednecks out there in the oil field for four dollars an hour <laughs> that's a <laughs> yeah i spent uh, 25 years there started out as a dishwasher and chambermaid type you know, what they call a galley hand a br mm -hmm. hand and made my way up to uh, a, a safety and environmental consultant so mm -hmm. did everything in between man cool cool what about you wait, man wait 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 wait, wait 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 come on you know you're born in louisiana you fucking you worked in the oil fields and you moved to New Zealand. That's not a fucking origin story, man. That's a fucking jerk off. That's a light fluff. You know what I mean? Uh, give me more, man. Like, so you worked in the oil fields and, uh, and it, what kind of shit happened when you were out in the oil fields? You know, was there, you know, is it just a bunch, you and a bunch of dudes, you know, was there some gay shit going on or, you know, was it, uh, did you guys go, you know, hit the weekends and, and party and shit, you know, you know, jump off the fucking rig and. Uh, we would go places. It's just a bunch of rednecks. There, there were a few women there every now and then, but uh, they were basically dudes mm -hmm. too. You know, <laughs> to did be. You, did to you expand your horizons? Nice did you did did you did you grow as a human being? Did you, ex, you know, uh, explore other? Worlds? Oh yeah, I I realized it, I realized what I did not want to do, which was work in the oil field. And so it, I learned a oh, lot. Oh okay. About, okay. But it was addictive, though. You know, the money was. Decent. I, I know it's $4 an hour, but I would work like 84, 84 to 100 hours a week. So a lot of overtime and stuff, you know. So the overtime stuff, it was, I would work two weeks on and two weeks off. So, uh, you know, as a young man with two weeks of, of pay, it was like a month's pay and two weeks off, you could get into a lot of trouble, man. So I would go work. I would just dread it every time, just going for the money. But yeah, it was, it was back in the time when things were pretty rough, man, in the oil field still, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, they were, you know, there were safety glasses were optional. A lot of people, a lot of dangerous stuff, man. A lot of, uh, a lot of looking the other way. You know, you kind of, you know, if you're afraid of an explosion, you must be a pussy. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> like uh, dumb stuff, man. But you learn a lot, and you, if you survive it, then you come out the other side better. Yeah. You know. I remember. But uh, yeah, I, I went. I, I was actually I forget that I I was a, a football player too for a while. Yeah. 
it's a pretty good, pretty good player, man. I, I played uh, college football, little uh, uh, semi-pro stuff, you know, and uh, it was really fast and uh, handsome at the time, but uh, you see things change, so. Yeah. Wait, was, that, was that the same time you were wearing those sandals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About the same time I was wearing those sandals. Oh, about handsome. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've watched a documentary, and it was about the uh, a certain town that was uh, just run by oil money. And uh, these guys would come in, and they would just do all kinds of drugs and, you know, get all kinds of hookers and, uh, you know, do all kinds of drinking and partying, and then they would, uh, you know, leave and go back out to the fields or whatever. And for whatever reason, I think the oil field died, and now this town is dying, and that's what the documentary was about. Uh, I just thought it was interesting mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, the um, where we live in Houston, where I live in Houston, uh, there's a shit ton of people that work in the oil business, and uh, I had no clue that they were such savages, man. I mean, they're young, and they've got, like, you know, all these expensive toys and all this money to blow and uh they just they're just savages man when they're not working they are partying did you partake in any of that savage oh or yeah what? yeah when we hit land from that point man when we get off the rig it was it was it was insanity man it was craziness but uh and then later on i worked uh, on, uh, on the land mm -hmm. jobs and which you know you, you work on the land jobs you can go to the bar at night which you know you go into the, in these these uh, oil fields and stuff. These these gas fields are out in the middle of nowhere. Like I was in the middle of Pennsylvania, and the in the in the in the mountains there, man. Uh, nothing, absolutely nothing, town. And lots of I mean I don't know what it was. The women were really ugly there. I'm sorry, but they were. Uh, really, I don't know what, if it's the cold weather or something. I don't know what was going on, but. Yeah, man, it was it was kind of it's like a wild west kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know. And the the town was so isolated that uh, that when the oil fields when the companies came in, they had to pave the roads and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. It was all just dirt roads all through the hills mm -hmm. and stuff, so they get their trucks through there mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yeah, it was it was crazy. I would uh, yeah, I got uh, I was reported uh, as being out in a bar drinking one night, and. Um, it, it was reported to my supervisor, you know, which it was down the street. I walked mm -hmm. over there and I got back to the office and I uh, said, uh, Jimmy there said you were, uh, you were in a bar last night hanging out and drinking and stuff. And I was like, yeah, you know, you know how Jimmy knows he was in the bar with me. You dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's crazy, man. Yeah, there was fights and, uh, absolute insanity, man. I would go, this guy was one guy was a superintendent. His signature move every time we went to the bar, he would get enough drinks in him. He would start doing the worm in the middle of the bar. Remember oh the worm? My God. The old. Mm. That's painful. But <laughs> the first time I, I turned around, I saw some movement. I saw him doing yeah. it, you know? I thought maybe somebody challenged him to do it or something. I missed yeah. something, you know? It's like, well, look at him. He's doing the worm. Then after about the fourth time I went out with him and he did that every time without being asked, I was like, Oh, that's just his, that's just what he breaks into when he gets a few drinks in him. This is a person. He was good at it. This is a person to do that. What does he think he's um, he's showing off at that point? <laughs> is that some kind of like um, sexual prowess because he can, you know, undulate his body in a certain motion? He thinks the women are going to just be attracted to this worm guy, or uh, is he just cuckoo? I, I, <laughs> after a while, we just ignored him. I don't know, man. <laughs> He was a pretty normal guy, but when he got some drinks in him, he liked to show his worming skills wow. off, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> it was so funny. There's so many characters there, man. This other guy, he uh, he had like a, a shriveled up arm. He had some kind of burst effect or mm -hmm. something, you know? But he would carry this rock in the other one. It was about like this big, mm -hmm. you know? But it, it, looked like, um, it looked like it had some kind of a... If you looked at the rock, it looked like some kind of an embryo or something. And... He swore up and down that it was a dinosaur uh, embryo that had been fossilized or something. He would carry this thing <laughs> around with him in his in his good arm, yeah. you know. He would he would try to shake your hand with his other arm, but he w he kept saying he would talk over and over about how valuable this thing was. And he was going to sell it to the Smithsonian or something like that. He's going to make a lot of money. He wouldn't let it leave his sight because he thought it was really oh, valuable, wow. you know. And uh, yeah, this is the kind of dudes that would show up out there in those mountains. It, they they bought this company 
Shell bought this company there and uh, they had a lot, a lot of work at one time and they had to just hire tons and tons mm -hmm. of people. So a lot of the people they brought in were just, uh, they, they brought, they had to weed them out after a while. They were nuts, <laughs> man. There was a reason why they weren't working, yeah. Yeah. you know? And, but these were high up people, you know, making 150, 200, $300,000 a year. Some of these guys were making three, four thousand dollars a day. Wow. And, uh, but they were absolutely nuts. Uh, it's just, they would show up uh, drunk to the job site to where they were just falling down, where they couldn't get out of the car, you know? It was like, uh, oh, where's the, where's Billy today? And we go out in the parking lot and he's just sleeping in the car with his door, door open. He's trying to get out, but he's too drunk to get out, you know? Like, oh man. Wow. So yeah, yeah, it's a good time, man. It's a good time, man. Wow, yeah, I never worked in the oil fields. Uh, my origin story, man, I freaking, I'm from Ukaipa, California, Southern Cali boy. And uh, man, I just, uh, I grew up out there. You know, we it was cool in California because we had, uh, where I lived, it was like 30 minutes away, you know, from, uh, well, not 30 minutes, about an hour away from the mountains, the beach, the desert, you know? So you had a lot of choices on what to go and uh, what to go and do. You weren't, you didn't ever have to try and, uh, figure out, oh, what do you want to do today? We had a lot of options. It's not like out here in, in Katy, Texas, man. There was like nothing. It, one thing that kills me about Texas is there's, it's all, there's no private land, or it's all private land. It's like, you can't, in California, you can, you can be in the mountains, you can pull over, and you can go hike, you know, it's no big deal. Here, if you pull over uh, and it's not fenced in, it, it, and you go hiking, it's still somebody's land, you know, it's a, uh, gonna be a part of some ranch you might run into some fucking cows and it's mostly flat out here and nasty there's no fucking mountains so anyways i'm gonna stop bitching i grew up in the mountains <laughs> I grew, it was really nice uh, i had a lot to do uh, when i was 17 man i got the fuck out of there though i joined the army man i uh i wanted to see the world i wanted to do some things and i wanted to blow some stuff up and uh so i got to do that man now, now, did you jo did you join by choice or did somebody uh, recruit you? Did somebody talk you into it? I joined by choice, man. I was I was really yeah, oh, that's cool. I was yeah, really yeah. stupid because I uh, when I was young, I always wanted to be a badass. I always wanted to do something cool. So uh, we always played war or we you know played some kind of cool game. I don't know. And uh, so I was pretty dead set on being a soldier. And so when I went in. Uh, I also was training too to fight at the, at that time, and the recruiter was like, "Hey man, we have an all army kickboxing team, so you know you can come in and uh, you can keep doing your kickboxing. It's not going to be a problem, and uh, you know it's going to be great." And, and I believed him, so I was a little bit duped. You know, I was a little bit recruited, uh, yeah. But uh, I ended up. Uh, not doing any kickboxing. <laughs> I just was a airborne medic uh, in the 82nd Airborne. And uh, I, I did end up doing some boxing when I was in the Army. That was cool. I got a gold medal for that. And then um, when I got out of the... Wait, no, I skipped over that gold medal? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a... To give up? It wasn't... Yeah, no, I Yeah, understand. it wasn't like a gold medal for the Olympics or anything like that. You know what I mean? Uh, Still pretty good, though. Yeah, man. you know, I'm good at what I do. <laughs> Still pretty sweet though, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, we did. Was it was it gold or gold colored? It was, it was real cheesy, little gold plated. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I did that, and then when I got out, I uh, I wasn't satisfied. I was still young, man. I wanted to keep doing badass stuff, man. So I I um, I started driving you know, um, escorts around, you know, like Jason Statham, basically, you know, like in the driver movies. Not, not a Ford escort. In a Ford escort wagon. Oh, yeah. okay. You're driving escorts in your escort I was driving escort escorts wagon. in my escort, man. <laughs> it was the shit. And, um, yeah, and that, you know, that job was fun, made a lot of money. Uh, I lost the pinky. I think I've already told you guys the story about me losing the pinky. Um, uh, you know, I got in a fight with a guy with a couple of butcher knives. Let's see. And then I, uh, I don't know, man. I floated, did work some bar jobs. You know, I moved to Arizona. 
I've been a freaking little, like a, a nomad uh, until I had kids. You know, I moved to Arizona for a while, then I moved to Texas, and then I had kids, and then I kind of settled. A nomad, a nomad is actually a cool car too, but uh, the uh, <laughs> Arizona. I didn't know you lived in Arizona, man. What was in Arizona? I lived in uh, Prescott, man, Prescott, Arizona, and uh, I, I worked. You know, the the bars. I worked at this company called Better Built. It was like a, a window uh, company. And um, mm -hmm. I just fished a lot, man. I fished, I trained, and I uh, I drank, and, and that was pretty. And I bought a lot of guns when I was out there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Arizona, you know, you gotta, Prescott's you gotta gorgeous, dig, man. man. It's got it has, you know, a lot of mountains and uh, lakes, and so there's a ton of fishing out there. It was really fun. Uh, I did a lot of outdoorsy stuff there. I've kind of like, you know, gotten in touch with my outdoor side outdoorsy side out there you know i i, I uh it was fun man and then I, I i moved to texas and uh i yeah, moved texas, to texas man. san antonio san antonio and i met my ex i was working at red lobster as a dishwasher guys i was washing dishes right and i was the worst dishwasher there because i'm huge and uh you got to be able to get in between people to grab dishes and shit. And uh, this little Mexican guy that worked there, he was so quick and he hated my guts, man. And he had been there for ever. And they paid him like $14 an hour to wash dishes, right? That's how good he was. And I'm getting like seven fifty dollars or some shit. And uh, this dude was just banging him out. Just run, go get him, come back. I'm just sitting there taking forever. They hated my guts. Anyways, so I'm not a good dishwasher. I met my ex, had kids, and um, I, I started fighting professional MMA. And uh, No, they, they, with, the, with the dishwashing part, not being very good at it, did the nine fingers, did it was affect that me? part of the issue? Man? Yeah, it did. Uh, <laughs> dishes would slip out of my, you know, my weaker hand sometimes and, and break. <laughs> You could have claimed a disability with that, man. They have to assist you with your disability. I, you know, I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. When it first happened, I first lost my finger. I did look into disability, but I, it, it's uh, you're too functional. It, 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 they didn't uh, see it. Yeah, but I mean, as a dishwasher, though, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like they, they must uh, assist you with your, your disabilities <laughs> and stuff like that. They could have gotten you a dishwashing assistant. Man. Right, they should have, bastards. <laughs> oh, man. Uh I, I just feel like my stories aren't as fun as yours, man. I just, you know, I, I, I was real, real regular. What are you talking about? You got guns and fishing and, and, and getting your fingers cut off with knives? <laughs> military? A gold medal, man? You got all kind of stuff. interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, man, in but there, you're right? on oil rigs with a bunch of drunk fucking Oh, that is necks, so boring, you know, man. So, it's, doing gay shit it's, and making it's money. It's grueling, though, man. Yeah, yeah, and I, I also uh, learned to fight there, too. So you, you learned to fight in the box in the military. I learned to fight in the oil field. There's physical fights back then, mm -hmm. you know? You, 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 could, you could scrap it out, man. You, had, you yeah. know? You're out in the middle of the ocean, man. There's no, no police are coming, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just like, oh, let them just work it out, you know? And, you're out there. and a lot of, lots of guys that I started with were ex-convicts. Yeah. Or, or current convicts, really, on, on uh, work release, yeah. you know? They would, uh, these uh, catering companies, offshore catering companies, as they called them, they would run the kitchens and the, and the you know, the, 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 the house cleaning services. They would hire these guys that were on parole and stuff. They could get them for like a dollar, two dollars an hour. So when I first started, the guys that I was uh, bunking with and stuff like that were either former inmates or, or current inmates. And some of them had done like 35 years and they still had that prison mentality, yeah, yeah. you know? Uh, and, uh, so, you know, I had to learn real quick, man. You know, you, you learn to, to deal with different people. Yeah. That's what happened to me in the military so, too. I, I had to learn really quick cause I was super young. 17, man, you don't know shit, you know? Yeah. I went to basic training and everybody thought I was a liar cause I had done a lot of stuff, man. When I was a kid, I used to do modeling. Um, I used to fight in uh, a lot of martial arts tournaments when I was a kid and, um, so I had a lot of fun stories, man. You know, I, I did a lot. And a lot of these people that I served with in basic training, they, um, 
were from all over the the world. It was crazy, but the the dudes that I was specifically in the room with were, you know, from like the Midwest and you know from a farm or two, and uh, they didn't get to do much, mm -hmm. and so they thought that I was a straight up liar. There was no way in hell a kid at seventeen could have done as much as you know that in that little amount of time, but. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, so I had to learn. I, I had the same issue. I had the same issue because I was. Uh, I, I just uh, left college and I was playing, you know, pretty big time football there. And a lot of my, a couple of my buddies were were drafted the next year to the NFL and they were playing and and sitting there on Sundays watching them in the TV room. I was like, oh, that's my friend, man. Look, I just I played football with him last year, and they're like, yeah, you're full of shit. This is before Google, you know. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. I was on the team with him last year, yeah. man. To like to like I kicked out of school, man. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it was kind of similar situation. You can't just Google it and prove it to them, yeah. you know. It it, it definitely yeah. um, it definitely fucked with me, man. Cause I'm a young kid. I was just like, man, you know, I just uh, it, it, I got a lot of hate. You know what I mean? It was like um, like in New Zealand, they have that whole tall poppy thing where like uh, back in the day they used to like try and cut people down that were too braggadocious, you know. Uh, and, uh, yeah, everybody on the same level. Yeah, bring everybody on the same level. And they try to do that with <coughs> me. And uh, so I had to humble myself. I had to shut up and just learn how to just kind of uh, observe, you know, and listen before I speak. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, you know, I had a pretty fun uh, fun childhood, man. I, I did modeling when I was younger. And, uh, you know, I worked with a lot of different, uh, different types of people. Uh, not anybody super famous, but people that had worked with famous people. So I had some pretty cool stories uh, from that. Yeah, I almost did like a, a real world road rules type show. MTV was sending out um, like you know uh, feelers. They were trying to get they were trying yeah. to get pe you know more people for the shows. And uh, I had sent an application and a video application. I went through the whole thing, and I was to the point where they would sent uh, us like contracts and I just I just needed my brother and my dad to sign and they didn't want to do it man they didn't want to they didn't want to be any part they didn't want to take any part of being on TV and uh, yeah so that killed that but uh, you know let's see I did that I did um, I did a lot of martial arts tournaments I used what, to fight what what the, when did you start doing comedy man I started doing Stand up. Stand up. Well, when I moved to Houston, man, I, I, uh, I moved to Houston when I after I got divorced, and I uh, moved up here with my two boys, and they were like one and three. So, um, shit, man, I don't even know how long that. Uh, my oldest is sixteen. So, fifteen, fourteen. Uh, that would be thirteen years. Yeah, about thirteen years, man. And then, uh, yeah, That's cool. and then, um, yeah, I came out, well, I, I was fighting out in San Antonio and I was supposed to, um, fight this dude called Rico Rodriguez was, the, um, an ex UFC heavyweight champion. And, um, mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah, I know yeah. Rico, I, I know who he is. And, and then his knee blew out or some shit. So he pulled out, but, uh, anyways, I was so green, man. I didn't know shit about fucking like MMA. I, I knew how to fight. I knew how to box. You know, I knew um, some martial arts. And then, uh, and so I would just, uh, you know, I had stand up basically. And so I, and, and I have no fear because I came from the, you know, the military. No, I don't. We, I'm talking about stand up comedy, man. Oh, my bad. I don't know what I'm thinking about, <laughs> man. So, it, your stand up game. Yeah, I understand your stand up game with your, your boxing and your footwork <laughs> and all that. And, you know, you can, you don't, you don't have to go to the ground. You can, you can stand asleep, and, and, and trade. I apologize. Okay, stand up comedy <laughs> was what, like uh, five years ago I started stand up? <laughs> and I, uh, I, yeah. And that was funny, man. <laughs> Because the, the stand up is, uh, it, it uh, you know, it's, it's with the uh, stand up is. Part of fighting and comedy, yes. though, you know. So yeah, oh, yeah. it's fucking hot in here. Anyways, uh, yeah, I. Um, oh, it's summer down I there, know, right? Man. Up there, right? Uh, <laughs> I forgot, man. It is, and we're about to get hit with a hurricane, though. So we're, it's it's about to be. Uh, we're about to get some nice weather. 
You're about to cool down a little bit. But yeah, you stand oh, up, man. Yeah, stand up. All right. Comedy, comedy, that so, part. Uh, yeah, man, five, five years ago, man, I, I've always liked comedy. I grew up listening to, like, uh, Sinbad and, you know, dudes like that. And uh, I, I always thought I was funny. So um, I, I started listening to Joe Rogan. It's like a lot of other uh, newer comics, you know, uh, in, in, in my class or whatever. And uh, and I, th I decided, you know what, I'm just going to give it a shot, man. Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz, uh, you know, all those guys, uh, Stan Hope. And I was like, man, these guys aren't that much different than me. You know, I, I, I need to go ahead and give this a try. So I went down to the improv and uh, I watched it and the open mic and I was like I can fucking do this and the next week I was there man and I was up and uh, and doing it and I've been doing it ever since uh, shit we've we've done shows in New Zealand we've done shows out here in Houston I've gone up out in Cali out in LA and shit in Louisiana you know New Orleans and shit so it's been fun it's been a fun ride um, I, I've been bl it's a good time man we've had, some, uh, we've had some great road trips and some good yeah time. That's what it's all Absolutely. about, too. You 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 want to make it to a certain level and make a living and do these things, but the the stuff on the way, you know, the journey getting there is just it's hilarious, man. It's such a good time. No, it is, man. The crazy nights, the the crazy shows we do, and the crazy venues and the weird people we meet, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and and, and just uh, you know, most nights is really full fun and cool and all that, but every once in a while you just piss somebody off, you oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> We have to we have to leave the joint running and screaming, and so we don't, you know, not running away from people. Be like, we got to get out of here. We, we we're gonna, you know, we're gonna mm. hurt somebody, or we're gonna get arrested, or you know, something's gonna especially go wrong. On the level here, that, yeah, so. especially on the level that we do it on, because uh, it's oh, yeah, it, you know, yeah. it's like uh, when you're doing these little bar shows and stuff, right? Yeah, you're right there with the people. There's no barrier. A lot of times, you know, you're lucky if you have a, a decent stage, and um, and or a stage yeah, at all. You know, that's what I'm saying. You're lucky if you have a decent <laughs> stage. If not, you're right there with the people, and you're doing. You know, you're trying to do the comedy, and a lot of times you're trying to do the comedy over a, a fucking basketball game going on or a baseball game going on, and uh, you know, people aren't there to to hear the jokes. They're here to watch the game, so you get backlash and shit like that but it's fun it builds character it builds your chops you know um, I like doing multiple rooms uh, we've me and you I've, I, we've done comedy I think in almost any and every room you can think of we do it all man that's a lot of these a lot of these uh, these dudes or women too they, they won't do certain they'll only do certain kind of rooms yeah. you know oh I'm an alternative comic or Oh, I can't do the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too old for this, I'm too young for that, I'm, I'm too white for this, I'm too this. But we, we do them all, man. We step in the gay clubs, anything, anything man. It's you about know. Being it's, funny. it's funny. It's people, about being funny. It's not about, yeah, people, uh, it's not about, you know, being in a certain niche or whatever, or I'm too old or I'm too whatever. You know, if you're funny, you're funny. Any, yeah. Anybody's going to laugh. Bill Burr, he says, if you can't do comedy, uh, if you can't do your jokes, all your jokes, and get laughs in a black room, then you shouldn't be doing those jokes, you know? And it's, and right, it, right, it's right. because... Funny yeah, is funny. Funny man. is funny, man, and it should translate over. You know, it shouldn't just be one-sided. So, yeah, man, I, I, I love doing it, man. I, uh, I It sucks because of this fucking, you know, this coronavirus, we haven't been able, well, I haven't been able to get out and go do it. And even before that, man, it's kind of, it, it's kind of tough because... Uh, I am older, you know, and I am, uh, I've lived a little bit of life and a lot of these comics that are running the scene out here in Houston, they're all fucking young and they haven't done shit and they're intimidated. They see me and they think, oh, this guy's a fucking bro and he's going to come in here and talk shit and they, uh, they shut it down, you know, and they don't even give me opportunities and shit to get up and, uh, yeah. And so... It's been it's been a little bit. They pigeonhole you before you before you get up there. They kind of pigeonhole you and like, oh, he's this guy, he's that guy. He's he's not gonna, you know. It's like, eh, you don't know yeah, me, man. Yeah, it's been difficult, man. So I've been I've been kind of forced to put on my own shows. You 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 know you too, and so, and they've been great. Uh, 
I've been fortunate enough, like I worked at the improv and I've met a lot of the top level comics and I've gotten to uh, talk with them. I, this fucking COVID hit right before, you know, I, I got the balls to actually uh, try and ask one to open for him. <laughs> but uh, I've had many comics say, you should have fucking said something. Russell Peters, man, me and him were hanging out all fucking night talking about jujitsu. He's showing me videos, you know, saying, hey man, uh, you realize that uh, only four people have seen this video, you, me, Joe Rogan, and Jean-Jacques Machado. Uh, Jean-Jacques Machado is like a, a master level um, jiu-jitsu uh, practitioner and uh, teacher. And um, they, Joe Rogan and, uh, and Russell Peters both train under him. And there was a video of, of them rolling. And he sat there and he showed it to me on his phone. And we just hung out, man, and just talked. And it was just a good time. And, um, you know, he was leaving. And I was like, yeah, man, uh, by the way, man, I do comedy, man. So, you know, maybe next time you're uh, in town. Goes, next time I'm in town, he says, you should have told me. I would have fucking put you up. He goes, you should have. He saw it. Like, his last night he he was there, he put up some, like, 14-year-old girl and some 17-year-old kid. I think they were, like, family friends. So, <laughs> it was just like, you should have said something. It's crazy. It's, it's, uh, you know, and Russell Peters, it, he's the biggest comedian in the world. 100%, yeah. You know? I know. I noticed that the bigger the names, the nicer the oh, people. Oh, dude! I don't know what it is. Him, I, Christina Pazinski. I've, I've met some big names myself too, and they're just always good yeah, people. Yeah, Christina Pazinski was just so strange, like huh? sitting down, shooting the shit, you know, and uh, just yeah. talking, hanging out. And I, I was just like, I, I was taken back, man, because these are these are all people that I've watched, you know, and on these different podcasts and watched their specials and stuff, and coming up and like. All right, trying to figure out their game plan, trying to figure out how they did it so I can get to their level and stuff, and um, and then to actually get down, to, you know, to meet them and sit down and talk with them, it's pretty fucking cool, man. You le you learn a yeah. lot. Uh, I think the, the the not the worst one, but the like each one you try to pull uh, a little bit of uh, information from. You know, like okay, I like the way that Christina P does her merch. You know, I like the way that Russell Peters uh, deals with his openers, uh, you know, shit like that. Uh, the only comic that he, that I felt uncomfortable around uh, was, uh, well, I probably shouldn't even say it. I felt uncomfortable around one comic, man. Let's just say it was a, a, a lot of cocaine going around, uh, a lot of sad looking people <laughs> not wanting to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so you do get both ends. You do get both ends, man. And um, and, and so. So I mean, how how tall is Rob Schneider anyway? Oh man, it's, <laughs> I didn't get to meet Rob Schneider. Oh, oh who are yeah, we talking yeah, about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Um, he looks a little short. And oh wait, wait, never mind. It has nothing to do with no, that. No. Uh, it's complete non sequitur there. So. Oh man, you know who? Uh, who was exactly the way that I thought he was going to be uh, was David Spade, man. He, he showed up, he did his shit, and he got the fuck out of there. He didn't want to talk to nobody. I was mm. like, and I figured, I was like, yeah, he's going to be like that. You know, I, 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 he, he's, he's, he's a big, he's big, he's done a lot. You know what I'm saying? I think he's, at this point he's more like of a, of a TV star than a comic. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know what I mean? So and he and he, and he, yeah, and he yeah. treated it like that. So he was like really in and out. That was the only one that I was like, I kind of not. I didn't feel big timed. I just felt like uh, I didn't really get business. anything from it. You know what I mean? It was, it was cool meeting him though. Yeah, he was just there for yeah, business, yeah, yeah. and that was it. You know, collector's improv check and, get and the take fuck out. out of there. I get that. You know, you can't knock it though. I mean, hey yeah. man, teaches their own. Everybody does their own thing. So. Uh, yeah, man, I've been doing comedy for a little while. Uh, I started off really dirty, and lately I've been trying to come up with a clean set after working at the improv and, and, and meeting the management and stuff like that and uh, seeing what they look for and seeing how they do things and seeing what these, uh, these traveling comics are looking for, you know? So uh, I'm not trying to come out with like a fucking, you know, clean clean set you know what i mean i'm not i'm not i i do i do dirty stuff but i i, I rarely say bad words though man it's not even the bad if you listen yeah, to my stuff not, there's some really dirty yeah it's, it's it's there's some really dark dirty stuff in mine but it's it's i don't say a lot of bad words though <laughs> yeah it's right there in the middle man yeah. you know if you yeah. listen so anyways that's that's basically where i'm at man hey, you know it, it's 
it's tough, man. This whole fucking COVID thing throws this shit off so so much. It's just like uh, you don't know. Uh, you, I don't feel like a comic anymore. You know what I mean? It's been so long since I've gotten up. Uh, the only thing is, kept. Yeah, we we just got. We just got back into the swing here and got locked down again. Yeah, man. The only thing that's kept me <laughs> going is, is this fucking podcast, man. This show, doing this show. You know, I like. Uh, I, I think I think I need to do something more though. With like last, I think last podcast we were talking about jokes and uh, you know trying to come up with stuff and maybe doing something on the podcast. And I was sitting all week trying to think of stuff, man. And the only thing I can come up with is just uh, you know um, the premise was. Uh, I've been doing this push-up challenge, right? The 22 push-ups for 22 days uh, to bring awareness to um, the 22 soldiers a day that are killing themselves, 22 veterans that are killing themselves mm. a day. And um, so anyways, I, uh, I got my kid to do it with me, right? And we're doing it side by side and he, I'm knocking him out and you can see me struggling and he's like, pow, 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 pow just banging him out like a machine gun and uh every comment on there was people laughing at me and you know, you know just like oh man my gut is two of him alone you know what i mean so yeah, the, yeah. the premise was just me being fat and just out of shape and getting old you know but i i haven't been able to work anything uh you know work on it yet but anyways man i i fucking been mumbling I a lot no, it's good, man. Tell them your story, man. That's what it's all about, yeah, it's, man. It's, but I, I'm, uh, <clears throat> you know, Auckland is on lockdown here. It's the biggest city in New mm -hmm. Zealand. But we, uh, if I get outside of the city, I can go do comedy shows, man. I just have to get past the roadblock somehow. It can be done. I might have to take, take a boat to get around. But my buddy, right before the lockdown, he went to, down to Wellington. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had some stuff to do down there, and he hasn't been able to get back now. But he's he's posting all the stuff about these great sold out shows and stuff mm -hmm. down there. And Wellington's a cool town, man. It's a. But I, I think uh, if I could get down there, I could do some actually show actual shows, yeah, yeah. you know. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I gotta I gotta find a way out of this the town for a little while, uh, man. Yeah, said the said the person that uh, spread the corona the second time and is the reason why you guys are on lockdown again. You know what I mean? It's not me, man. It's well, I'm just saying it's the same type of mentality. A, I didn't have COVID, man. I think it's a hiatal hernia. It's the same type of mentality. <laughs> <laughs> it's chest pain, you know. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta go this week and get an, uh, uh, a, a scope down my freaking throat to check that out, man. I don't know what's really? going on there. I think I damaged myself skiing last year, man. Yeah. I fell off the side of this big drop off, man. I, I took the wrong path, the wrong, uh, actually it wasn't a, 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 a ski uh, thing at all. I went through the woods accidentally and then uh, came out, when I did hit back on the, uh, the ski slope there, I, it was a huge drop off, mm. man. And I had just had to ride with it and I fell and hit my, fell on my back about, 10, 15 feet up. I think it's, uh, I think that might, that's the only thing I could think of that caused this. Wow. Thing. It's a good time. It's a beautiful place down there in Queenstown, though. Mm. You know, uh, even when you're in pain, you know, you're like, oh, oh, I just fell on my back and I look up, look around, I was like, oh, it's still beautiful here. It's so fantastic. <laughs> oh, I think I'm dying. Oh, look at that view. <laughs> it's so great. That's funny. True story. <clears throat> that's funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I worked out with my son. Uh, two days in a row, you know, he's finally uh, he's been coming up to me and been like, hey, dad, let's train, you know, let's do some MMA training. So the uh, past couple of days, man, you know, he's been hitting, I've been holding pads for him, showing him his kicks, showing him different angles and stuff like that, what to look for. And, um, you know, I woke up yesterday and I was, I was achy and uh, I felt a little congested and my throat, you know, felt kind of funny and my guts were kind of messed up and I was just like well I think I got the COVID and uh, so we couldn't I've been in the house this whole time and you know she's unfortunately had to go back to work but she's been super precautious you know and and so like that so we couldn't figure it out and so we went down took the test uh, I, I mine is three to two to three days like they give me the results in two to three days so I should get them in a couple of days she got the rapid test and uh, she came back negative so I don't think I got the COVID, man. I just think I got my, my ass kicks, you know. I just, uh, man, I, I'm just getting old. And uh, 
That's a badass kicking when you when you, you get bad so bad you think you have a virus. Oh my god, kind dude. Of pandemic virus. Yeah, man. man. Oh, it hit me so hard. I, I it gave me freaking. I'm coverage. telling you, man. I've been in. I was in bed like an old man. I was like, oh, I can't move. I don't feel good. And uh, and I was like, I was moving around. You know, I'm trying to figure out which muscle groups hurt. When I was talking to the doctor, and I'm sitting there as, as I'm talking to the doctor, it it hits me as like every muscle that hurts is the muscle that it takes to like hold the pads <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> oh man so yeah i felt kind of stupid but uh but hey we're back training man i took today off we'll get back in there tomorrow and uh you know see where it goes that's been fun man it's been fun i like having a, a 16 year old to teach martial arts to you know rather than teach it to a class of strangers because uh I can get mad and yell and say mean shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> to mine, I can't get fired. So it's working out really good, man. It's kind of like a, a therapy session for me and a workout session for him. And, you know, we get through it. How, how tall is your kid now, man? He's, he's pretty tall, right? Yeah, man, he's got to be at least 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, yeah, yeah, good reach. And he's wrestling too, right? He does wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, he does wrestling. He's got good yeah. reach. Um, he he he's he didn't grow up training in martial arts like I did, so we have a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to the stand up. But uh, his ground game is stupid sick, man. He's a uh, you know, if if I wasn't two hundred and fifty pounds, I would have a hard time rolling around with him for for sure. Yeah, that's good, man. So the. Uh... Yeah, man. I, with this this week uh, coming up on the car show, we got the, the best of. Okay. I had to break it down in, into two. The best of the K and I car show. I had to break it into two weeks, man. I think I'm gonna release the next best of the next week, maybe or the week after. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But man, it's pretty good nice. though, man. Pretty damn good. Nice, yeah. man. I'm I'm loving it, man. I'm having. Excuse me. I'm having lots of fun. I really wish that we could be in a studio working on this shit together. You know, do it like legit. But I mean, even this. Yeah, it was. It's tough, man. We 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 having to improvise here. We're getting it done, yeah. though. But yeah, be, when we were together, it was so much quicker, you know, and back back and mm -hmm. forth, and more personal. And sound was better. Yeah, and everything. man. And you know, you you got better coke than me, so we're we're more up. <laughs> I'm just played. But yeah, man. Freaking, uh, you know, yeah. It's been fun. I I love doing these. I want to keep going. I want to I want to add stuff. I want to add segments. I want to know what you guys want to see. Um, because we're just a couple of old retards, man. We don't we don't know what's cool anymore. You know, we don't know what's what's hip. We don't got our fingers on the pulse. Only you know pulse that we feel is on our cock when we're jerking it, man. So what? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys gotta fucking uh, let us know, man. You know, get in on it, and uh, and we'll we'll make it happen, man. If you guys want to, you know, hear more of these, uh, um, you know, true or nots or what, help us name this. We can't even fucking come up with a name. Can't come yeah, up with a name. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it bullshit or not? Real or not? I don't fucking know, man. But you know, we we want to play trivia with you guys. We want to, you know, we want to interact with you guys. We want to kind of make this a community, not a not a fucking show, you know. So um, hit us up, man. Let us know. Uh, anything you want to add, bud? Uh, subscribe, man, and uh, we're actually give, doing a, a giveaway for a 10 millimeter socket. If you'd like a, the the elusive 10 millimeter socket that goes away, man, just subscribe to the channel and comment on one of the videos 10 millimeter, and we'll send you one, man. Everybody needs a 10 millimeter socket, right? <laughs> There's so many comments on that 10 millimeter socket, man. It's so oh yeah, it's funny, funny man. Yeah. That's the way out. That's the way you can kidnap a guy like me. <laughs> oh, it's the yeah, and it's it's the van, the the van that's on there. It's really cool yeah. too, man. Free ten mil ten millimeter socket, man. But it's true though, man. Everybody, Everybody uses one, use one ten millimeter socket. We'll send it to you, man. Just subscribe and comment ten millimeter. Absolutely, man. cool deal. All righty, guys. Subscribe, make a comment. We'll send it to you. Peace. <laughs>